Good morning, everyone, and welcome to BAM's 2020 Forum, Making It. And we certainly did. I'm Alex McCallum, now former chair of BAM. I hope you're looking forward to today. It's very different this year. No strange looking sandwiches and cold coffee or a three mile walk to the nearest loo. At least I hope not. But as always, we have a really interesting program of speakers for you. I'm up and fully dressed. I don't really mind whether you are or not. Before we go any further, I must say a big thank you to Lewis Sykes, who has worked with the BAM fam to make this happen. Lewis, you have been a patient, have the patience of the a saint and are a true wonder. Also huge thanks to our generous forum supporters, London School of Mosaic and Anne Cardwell Ceramics. Just so you know, all the talks have been pre-recorded um, to take some of the nerves out of the day and to enable us to invite conversations from different time zones. However, each film will be followed by a live question and answer session. Hence the ruffians on the screen now. Please use the Q&A bottom, at the screen, at bottom of your screen to do this. If someone has already asked a question you were going to ask, please click the thumbs up to so that we know to prioritize that question. And please ask away because the question part of the forum is often the most lively. All the speakers are happy to continue the event, bright, the conversations via social media after the talks and their, data, their details will appear on screen. Also, please don't forget that all the films will be available for six months exclusively to forum attendees for after today. And please don't use a Q&A facility to ask for help with logins or passwords. Okay, let's start. So today's first session is called Drawing on Time and brings together two Edinburgh ba based mosaic artists, Joanna Kessel and Doogie McInnes. Doogie is currently on the remote Scottish island of Tyree, allegedly, <laughs> a bit like, a bit like Napoleon <laughs> in the Atlantic, marooned in the Atlantic. So take a good look at him now because he might not be there when we come back. And the question and answer session will be hosted by Rachel Davies of BAM Scotland, who is now also chair of BAM. So let's start the film. Hello and welcome. I'm Joanna Kessel. Today I'm going to be in conversation with my colleague and friend Dougal McInnes for BAM Online Forum 2020. Doogie and I want to talk about the inspiration behind our work, looking at sketchbooks and materials. We are fortunate both to live in central Scotland and meet fairly frequently and enjoy quite impassioned discussions. So we thought for the BAM Forum that we'd like to share some of these insights with you. So welcome, Doogie. Yeah. We're here, finally. Yes, Joe, thanks very much. Hi, it's great to be here. And uh, just seeing all of your, your work and your sketches. It's... A couple of weeks ago, we met up and we were looking at each other's sketchbooks. And um, Something that actually we haven't done that much before, even though we have talked a lot about um, our work. But when we met, we were both really enjoying raking through drawings and talking about where imagery comes from. So I wonder, Doogie, whether I can get you to kind of kickstart this talk by maybe introducing one of the pieces of work that we're going to hang the conversation around. Sure, yeah, and, and we can go on to sketchbooks and materials, yeah, yeah and so forth, yeah. workshops, yeah. yeah, so much to, to talk about actually. Um, so I have here two pieces. Uh, this one is, is, is from this year, it's called Fault, as many of my summer mosaics are called, Fault 1, Fault 2, and so on. Um, well, I'm just going to interrupt you there straight away. It's, I love that where there's an interest and it just keeps coming up again and again. So with you saying that about the title, 
is one piece doesn't necessarily satisfy all that there is there in you about making that. That's right. I, I never worry about titles, actually. Um, I, I, I look back at photographs of my work and the same titles have been used over and over again. It's, it's, it's a, you're quite right, it's a, a theme because geology is at the core of my, my whole um, raison d'etre of, of, of my work. It's the major influence. My work has evolved, obviously, as we'll see from the sketches. Um, and what, I'm, what I've been searching for is to get to the very essence of my emotional response to geological forces. Um, we, all, we know now that the, the, the earth is made up of moving tectonic plates and that's been really fascinating for me for a long time. I was going to say, and does fault relate to a particular place or is it a notion about the sort of um, geology and the, the pressures on the earth and what's formed Scotland, I suppose, in, in many ways, where we live? Yeah, Scotland's got a tremendous variety of geology and it's had a long geological history um, and, and looking at rocks you'll see that they're absolutely full of fractures and, and tension marks and faults and it's it's really fascinating and it's it's given me a lot of um, well it's the emotional response to that I've always been fascinated by the shapes the natural shapes, the natural forms that occur yeah. through geological processes. Yeah. I know you do a lot of drawing with yeah. the archaeology work that you do. So do you find that when you're out looking at the landscape that you are working with a sketchbook and, and you know, obviously you're not seeing right down into the earth, but you're seeing what's happening on the surface? Getting back to this piece, um, as I say, I'm, I'm trying to get down to the very heart of what, 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 what my emotional response is. Removing any extraneous material, removing anything that's not essential, trying to get right down to the heart of what my response to geology is and what my artwork is. And, and, and that's why the, the work is very, very minimal. It's, well, that's one of the things for me which I really love about your work, about Doogie's work, is this absolute simplicity in terms of the construction of the work, but also the use of the material and the repetition, but then these slight shifts and that nuance and the way that your eye is just taken you know, we've got this um, kind of energy here towards the top and the bottom um, of this piece of work and that tiny bit of colour, so where you're using the natural colour in the stone and then I notice that lovely little bit of sumptuous gold leaf mosaic has just crept in. It's gold leaf smalty, yeah, leaf smalty. and a wee bit of colour smalty, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but uh, I keep keep smalty to a minimum. Yeah. It, it, it seems to enhance or heighten the qualities of the slate, uh, especially the gold smalty. We've got lots of, which we'll come on to, lots of gold here because it's a material I use a lot in, in my work, but it's, it's a sumptuous, powerful oh, yeah, material, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, but I, I... I'm really fascinated by what you're talking about there, about the being in your studio, and I, I know your studio, Doogie, and it's, it's just big enough for you, really. It's a very small, intimate space, and what you're working on is very intimate um, in terms of scale, even though you're making larger scale work. Um, but that whole thing of when you're cutting and you're cleaving the stone, or if um, I'm cutting gold leaf mosaic or marble or smalting. And you're noticing what's happening at that break point. So your focus is so um, 
it's just on that one thing. And in some ways, there's something really lovely about forgetting whatever else is going on in the world, which right now in this COVID situation is actually really lovely to be able to forget that. But that there's some, we've talked before about time so um, and place. So place being a physical place, but place in terms of time. So we've got sort of geographical place and then a place in time. And I think there's something about the making of work and the, the time it takes to make a really considered piece of work. You know, you're intimately involved in it. And that nuance of seeing what the crack is and, oh, I might use that piece. And what am I going to place that against? So I'm going to place it against this other piece. And the, the dialogue or the energy or the shift that's created there. But that might just be, you know, like a, a little bit like that that you've decided. So, you know, when you come out, so that's sort of in micro, but then going into the macro of the whole work. And if we're thinking about, this piece, so of mine, Invisible Cities, Crepuscolo, which is dusk. And it's this is just one section of five sections, so one of my architectural pieces. But when I was making this, you know, I'm deciding exactly which piece of black marble, which black marble is going here, which gold I'm using, whether it's a white gold or whether I'm putting a yellow yellow gold or a pale yellow gold in there. So each, and I'm working with tweezers. Going back to what you said about the working in the studio, I don't have music. I'm totally focused, so much so that two hours, two and a half hours is, is, is the maximum stretch that I can work. I'm, I'm so focused on each piece of slate that I, I'm placing down in relation to the other, so there's a dialogue. And I find that very, very taxing on the brain. I, I get very tired. It is. It's, it's that absolute focus and concentration and being at one with what you're doing, which I think for a creative artist is really important. That word commitment that you, you use, Joe, is, is so important. If you want to do this seriously, you've got to commit time, yeah. energy. Um, and, and have a, well, I have a vision of, of the piece that I want to, to, to make, and I can't wait to, to realize that idea. Um, and from sketchbooks, which we'll talk about uh, later, um, over the years, I've got this library of imagery in my head. I know the material so intimately. I know what it can do. I know what slate works with. What I know the directions it works, the directions it doesn't. You know, if if, if these were placed vertically, it, it just wouldn't wouldn't work at all. Um, so it's it's there's a drive there. You, you have an idea. Form, forms in your mind and you just got to get, get out there and, and work on do it. it. Just do, do it. it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, you can sketch for, <laughs> you can sketch for a million years, but just go out and stick this stone onto a bit of board and see what happens. There comes a point where you have to commit yourself and do it. And, you know, some pieces don't work, do they? Don't. You know, let's let's yes. be honest. And it's it's oh god, that's so hard when you've made something and you've invested that time in it. But you learn something through it. Yeah. Um, but quite often, you know, maybe they're salvageable, or yeah. you know, you're part way through and you can see it's not working, and then you can kind of pull back a bit. Um, it is. It is kind of crucifying when you realise that you're, something's not right. As I said before, that there, there's a drive. My whole art is a combination of intellect and, and emotional response, the heart and the brain. Yeah. It's there, I can see it, but whenever I try to 
realize the piece, you know, I say, well, okay, it's, it's not achieving what I really want to achieve, but it's, it's, a, it's a step. And probably if, if one achieved perfection, then where do you go from there anyway? So we can never achieve perfection. I think nothing is black on white. No. So, you know, luckily for you, and for me with this, it's mostly kind of a gray area. Yes. So um, I, I think it's a journey, isn't it? It's, um, and you know, there, there isn't an absolute right answer in terms of the art piece that would define everything. But you can make work which is really satisfying and which oh, yeah. Yeah. is really pleasing. If I come on to talk about um, this piece yeah. and then um, and then maybe to touch on the other piece, the sort of sister piece to it, this one, uh, Crepuscolo, which is um, dusk, and then uh, Alba, which is dawn. So they have um, Italian and English titles uh, from the series Invisible Cities, which is being and seeing. So being in a given place at a given time and what you notice because what you're feeling that day. So one day I might walk down a road and not notice anything. And then the next day I might walk down the same road and just suddenly find all these tiny little things going on that are of interest. But it's also both these pieces reference time, so being in a given place at a given time, and light, which obviously gold leaf mosaic is kind of about light, you know, these light reflecting qualities. But that kind of specialness that I find um, in terms of being, for me, I'm in an urban environment. That's kind of what I'm really responding to or have been, although these drawings are kind of moving into more of your area. So I've been looking at rocks here. But, <laughs> but you're looking very much at um, uh, sort of rural, natural environments, but we're still very much dealing with being in a place at a time. And, you know, many of the places that I'm responding to, so I'm thinking of Italy's a big influence on my work. So I'm thinking of being in the back streets of Venice. You know, I'm not going to St. Mark's Cathedral but I'm walking down these tiny alleyways where there's a scuff or a scratch or a smear of paint. And depending on what's next to it or what the light conditions are, I feel it might sound a bit funny, but it kind of jumps out at me and it's, it's like, hey, I'm here. And I've walked past quite often and then I go, oh, there was something back there that I really wanted to have a look at. So I walk back and I have a look at it. And then sure enough, there is something, or maybe not, but of interest. Yeah, I'm good to interrupt you now. It's my turn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've seen photographs in your studio of bits of building and pipes and yeah. brickwork. And that's exactly what I do. Most of my photographs from, especially down the Mediterranean, Italy, Spain, uh, most of my photographs that I bring back are, are, are exactly that, you know, cobbled, <laughs> fractures in cobbled streets and, and proportions of, of, of uh, brickwork against yeah. uh, smooth concrete. Uh, and particularly in Spain, in the terrain in Spain, the interface between the, the artificial and the, the natural, you know, yeah. so we have rock strata and someone's built their house, but it's, 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 it's melding, it's flowing into the, the geology. Yeah. And ah, that, that fascinates me. There is a, an approach that's consistent. You know, if you look at my sketchbooks from art school. Which was a joy to look at. 
Yeah, 50 years ago, and, and a sketchbook, there's, there's one there from 2009. My obsession, if you like, with the square yeah. and the minimal um, is still with me after 50-odd after years. Yeah. I haven't gone off at yeah. great tangents. I've explored portrait format, I've explored landscape format, but I always come back to the square. I don't know what it is. It helps me to, to focus more on what I'm trying to express yeah. in that square format. Yeah. I think other formats are kind of digress from what I'm trying to achieve. Yeah. Unfortunately, the sketchbook got damaged by water, but you can still see the, the approach. And, and also, this, this is probably from about 45 years ago, this yeah. repetition this textural effect, and I see it in your work too. Yeah. That's why I love your work, Joe. I, I just, I'm drawn to it so much. And yeah. then when you produce these beautiful pieces yeah. using stone, yes. too much smalty in my opinion. Uh, <laughs> hey, only kidding, I don't only know kidding. if you can get only... too much of the gold leaf, but... Um... but uh, no, I, I, I do love your work. I, I, I love the, oh, the combination of limestone and, and, and glass. It's just great. And, and this, can I hold this up? Yeah. Yes, yeah, absolutely. This, this technique that you've developed with the smoothness of the, the surface of the yeah. concrete cement. The, what people... I mean, they are just amazing. And the gold leaf becomes so dynamic, cast into, and also it feels like velvet, doesn't it? Does, it? You know, yes. when, oh. when you're allowed to touch oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so these are the uh, small sections which um, we'll look through the sketch uh, the sketchbooks and show those images. But um, oh my goodness, I can't remember. There were hundreds of these that I cast and then uh, formed the piece "Invisible Cities Alba," uh, which is dawn. I do love the fact that Alba in Italian means dawn, dawn and then it means Scotland as well, oh, which is, yeah. of course, where we both yeah. lived. For me, there's something really interesting about the, you know, this is mosaic to me. Uh, purists might not agree with that, but um, hey, who I get cares? That. I get that too. Who no cares? <laughs> that whole kind of meditative process of making all these individual units so I'm casting these so I'm having to stick each piece into a mold and then to cast them and then to break the mold open then to polish them and then the concrete is all slightly different tones of the same color so then to lay them out on a floor it's just under two meters high the um, the finished piece and decide exactly which location which section is going so it's really it's really involved but yeah. I love that and I love all the different stages and the considerations that I have to make at each stage you know I'm, t I'm totally involved and so I'm I made both this piece and um, Twilight for my show at Collect, which is the Crafts Council craft and design show. Uh, so this was in 2019 and it was at the Saatchi Gallery. And Collect Open is a section where um, 15 artists, more or less, can have their own show. So I was showcasing my work, not within a gallery, to this really kind of rarefied world um, that's interested in collecting craft um, and objects. And for me, this was making these two pieces of work was one of the two really pivotal points in my life. I think the first one was when I received a research and development award from Creative Scotland in 2010 and I went and studied contemporary mosaic in Italy so that involved
doing a course at the Scuola um, in Spilimbergo, but also going around and looking at architectural mosaic, um, mainly in the north of Italy, um, where I came across the work of Carlo Scarpa, who's um, the architect who's been a major influence, and in fact is partly why I started to use uh, concrete. And some of my work actually I've called Omaggio a Scarpa, so um, uh, one of the sculptures that I've made. The other thing I like about your, your work is it's, it's, it's musicality. Yes. Yeah, it's, and it's something that um, my tutor at art school who kick-started me off. George Garson. George Garson. That moment he, he took me into his studio and showed me his, his small slate pieces. My goodness, that, that, that was a life-changing moment. I, do you know, I love hearing I still, that still story. Shudder. However many times you tell me that story, because I can just see it was an electrifying moment for me. It was, because I was brought up on the west coast of Argyll, and I was fascinated as a kid by textures, colours, rock formations. I remember finding my first amethysts and agates, and that, as a young child, that was really exciting. Um, so I, 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 I had this library in my head of, of, of all these shapes and colours and so forth. And then when George Garson took me into his studio and showed me his small slate mosaics, that was it. Yeah. You know, that's nearly 50 years ago. Yeah. So George, you're responsible for this. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know. But he, one, yeah, one thing he said to me was, it, it's, it's, you're like, you're making music and you're placing notes, musical notes. And he said, one botched note and the whole symphony collapses. I absolutely agree with him. When I, when I was making this, and this was one of five panels, I think, some of them were slightly wider. Um, and I have to say, I was working to the deadline, which was a bit scary, because if it didn't work, <laughs> What on earth was I going to hang in the Saatchi gallery? Anyway, it did work, so that was great. I kind of knew it would work, but you know, there's a bit of fear. Um, but I was deciding exactly which piece to place. So, okay, so that's my, <laughs> that was my design. There were lots of drawings which I kind of was working along to get there, but that, that tiny little piece turned into something which was nearly two meters by one and a half meters, which is kind of crazy. And I'd drawn it out onto the panels. Um, so I knew where the gold lines were going to go and then where, I love this marble. Actually, I have to tell you about this marble is, um, it's Nero Marquina, and I'd got a whole stock of that in the studio, but I thought I'd better order some more just in case I run out because the time scale's going to be short. And also I don't want the, the colour to change slightly, but it's a different batch. And then when the next batch arrived, it had all this white through it. So I was horrified. I was just going, oh my God. It's, um, you know, it almost looks like the fat that runs through, through a piece of meat. You know, it's really streaky. So I got on to the place in Italy straight away and was explaining my, um, my problem with it. Um, so they immediately, God, they were great. <laughs> they immediately sent me a slightly different black, which was very, um, just very dense and black. So then I ended up with three different blacks. So the original one, this slightly striated one, and then this other dark one. And what it enabled me to do was to actually start to build in this slight ghosting lines yeah. so they echo what's going on here but in a more subtle way and so that pure accident 
was absolutely fantastic for me. And it kind of, I mean, I hadn't started making the piece, but it kind of was a last minute thing, which I hadn't planned. Mm. Um, because the pieces that I'd made before, which had inspired this, which were smaller, so also called interface, um, was just using the original black. So it enabled me to make not only a leap to this larger scale, but a leap in terms of what was happening in the quality of the black. And I'm just going to, just with the musical note, so that's partly about, you know, placing what comes next, what's above, what came before. So do you want to tell us a little bit about this other piece that yeah. we've got, got here, which we've ignored so far? <laughs> In the corner. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I've done a series of, of uh, mosaics on that, that uh, not a theme, but approach where in it's space that's the dominant element in the piece. So the linear yeah. space is the dominant element. Yeah. The, the, the mosaic, if you like, if you want to call it mosaic, is, is just a supporting agency. Yeah. yeah. Um, but although so the one doesn't exist without the other. Yeah. But the, 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 the slate background, if you like, is subordinate to the the importance of the the space, the linear space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that, I found that fascinating. That becomes a line. It's it's dark. It's got the shadow. Yeah. Yeah. Your eye is drawn to it, but like as you say, it's a gap. It's a space. There's material around it. Yeah. And that's kind of really nice, isn't it? That something which isn't there is it's, it's, is actually yeah. it. it? Yeah. But it needs yeah. what's around it to um, well, to, to, it, to, to make it. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I love the curve in here because there's so many linear, um, uh, you know, vertical, horizontal qualities, and then this curve seems quite surprising. I know for you, you spent a lot of lockdown in your studio because your studio is at home, so you were able to access it. Whereas for me. We were locked out of our studio, which it, oh, was very you. hard, yeah. was yeah. very hard. So um, coincidentally, and thank God for that, is I just decided I wanted to do some more drawing before, kind of in February, before lockdown started. So I'd been looking at ways of drawing and then I've got a dog, so I needed to walk my dog. So I ended up out on Arthur's seat, which is a volcanic stump in the centre of Edinburgh. And it's a huge landscape. My God, it was the most wonderful place. It was like having wilderness in a city. Interesting about sketching. Um, the sketch becomes a finished piece sometimes. Uh, well, these these ones certainly are. They're yeah, I, going I, off on their own route. Will I hold this up? Because this, yeah. this is what... I, yeah, yeah I, I use um, an ordinary biro pen, black biro pen, and, and often I'm quite satisfied with the little, yeah. little sketches. They're just uh, pieces in themselves, but um, I rarely trans... very rarely translate from here direct onto... It's the nature of expressive work is that the expressive artist um, is, is, is changing the piece, you know, as, as they go along. Um, you know, it doesn't, you know, so how, can you just explain then how you'd go from one of your sketches there to in the studio? Because there's, there's got to be some translation there. Yeah, well, all of this is in here. Yeah. Yeah, but it's a filtration for a process. I filter out um, ideas that come to mind. Um, I, I'll have an idea, I'll maybe be driving somewhere or, or, or in the studio working and an idea, an approach will come to, come to mind. And I'll sit down and sketch it out and 
20 sketches later, I've, I've filtered out yeah. from the original yeah. idea, yeah. which I've, I don't use, and I've, I've refined it and refined it and refined it. And then when and where, I... Sorry, where will you do that? Will you do that in your sketchbook? Yes, Googie, yeah, you'll, you'll, yeah. You'll, you'll find that the, the same the same imagery is repeated over and over again and until I get the balance just right. And then when I'm faced with the pre-framed yeah. board, it changes again. You know, the, the proportion changes. Yeah. I, I see it. I don't set out to create something beautiful. You know, I'm just using simple conventional proportions and, yeah. and so on. Beauty for me is, is, is in the materials. I guess the other thing is um, where we're at now. Um, you know, we've touched on COVID. Things will be different, but we'll be moving ahead. I always feel you've got to move onwards and forwards rather than looking backwards. <laughs> As I guess we are in our work, you know, we're talking about how each piece of work informs us and then influences our thinking um, for the next piece. But I'm wondering where, where you're at at this point in time, Doogie, and what you're, you're looking towards doing. I've just uh, recently got a domestic commission f uh, from a geologist who lives in Scotland um, for a piece that he wants uh, it's called um, Unconformity, and that has sparked off a slightly different approach. So I'm producing two or three pieces for him to choose from. And will they be this size? Or yes, he, he wants yeah. that size, yes, yeah. uh -huh. so, yeah. which is quite good. Yeah. Or, or just slightly bigger in fact. So. I'm working on my drawings and um, I've just fallen in love with them, actually, with... Um... Can, can I see that one, Joe, just, yeah. just a second? We're talking about unconformity. And... You know, this is an unconformity, isn't it? Strata so going it this is. way and strata going yeah. that way. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. that, that's what you should call it. Yeah, it's actually called immersion, and so a number of these pieces started off being called strata, um, or stacks and strata. I think these little sketches also kind of show that. So this was from my drawings on Arthur's seat. Mm -hmm. um, and then these obviously weren't done actually on Arthur's seat, those were my drawings in my sketchbooks, but then when I came back and was working in the studio, um, but then they kind of melded with things that were going on in my head about looking at the object that's in the material and the spaces around it, um, which, which was more important and what happened if they were of equal importance or if that importance changed. So um, I just recently got black watercolour paper. Oh God, this is a joy. And I've been working on it with a mixture of inks and watercolour, but I really like where the interstices or the gaps around that I'm now looking at those as opposed to the mosaic, the marble or the gold leaf, whatever it happens to be. So I'm kind of enjoying that whole thing of exploring. Um, but I have an idea for a new mosaic piece, which will maybe be composite again, a little bit like this, um, of, of many units of this kind of size, but unlike these where they were joined together to make larger panels is they're almost going to be like little sample test pieces that would be hung on a wall with gaps between them but i'm going to devise a hanging system where they're very easy to move around so that 
well, I haven't told you what, what I'm going to make. Um, so the, my plan is I'm doing some silicon mold making, is to make some mosaics using a variety of materials and then to cast them into concrete, which may be coloured, which may be grey, which may be black, but maybe some really lovely, like those sort of hematite reds and ochres and so on. But where the gap and the mosaic, as it were, would be cast, but would all become one material. So then whether you're reading the mosaic or the interstices, I don't know, it would be kind of up to the viewer. But then some of them might have, because I'm going to make them out of different materials and see how they work. So some might be gold leaf, which is glass, very hard, uh, smooth, shiny surface. And if I use marble, obviously, there's this more ribbon, striated um, surface. Um, and then to replace some of the tesserae, maybe with the actual tesserae, so that these might either all be the same or they might have variations and they might vary in terms of the colour that I cast it in. But then I kind of quite like the idea that, if, you know, it could be infinite in scale, is that if somebody buys it, then they become the curator so that these can then be moved around. And it's been great to, I hope, illuminating for everybody. Um, Doogie and I sharing. How two artists stumble their way through, <laughs> through life. Um, kind of, you know, thoughts where ideas come from, how they translate from drawings and sketchbooks into tangible pieces. But, um, and raising more questions than answers. There's always more questions. Yes, than answers. Yes. Anyway, on that lovely note, I think we should finish it here and just thank everybody for joining the BAM online forum and participating in this conversation with us. So thank you, Dugan. Yeah, thank you, Joe. It's been great. Mm -hmm. Hi, well, thank you. I'm just waiting for, for Diggis. I don't know if we can see uh, Diggis video just yet. Uh, he is there somewhere. I, he, I, I he have seen, seen him. Um, but um, I'm, I'm aware that we're kind of keeping to time, so I'm, I'll start talking and hopefully you'll, you'll come. Yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you, Joanna and, and Diggy, for just a really interesting talk and discussion just about how your ideas evolve and the materials and just sort of everything that's involved in creating those uh, lovely works of art. Um, so I'll start by asking you a question, Joanna, unless there's any, I've got a few things that I'd like to ask, but I don't know that if, if you do have any questions, please do type them in the Q&A um, box um, and then I can relay those to uh, Joanna. Um, there aren't any right now, so I'm going to just start off by by asking you um, something, Joanna. Um, I'm so just really interested. So I was just going to say, Doogie might have lost connection on Tyree. So um. okay, well, ho hopefully he will join us. <laughs> um, so so yeah, I was really interested. You're um, talking about time. Um, cause you know, that's, that's the title of your, of your talk. Um, and you've got the, these two pieces, the, um, the twilight and the dawn, um, pieces. Um, do you want to expand just a little bit more about how sort of the timing of those and, and, and sort of your thoughts behind that as you were putting those pieces together? Yeah, sure. I'd love to. Um, um, ba basically, the uh, series Invisible Cities is about um, what we notice. So I think Doogie and I were talking about that, about being in a place at a given time. And things like the light condition that you might notice something on one day that you don't notice on another day. And it could be because of the light or it could be because of the way you emotionally respond to, um, to something. 
I think that, that bit's interesting as well, the way that you're feeling on the day will influence kind of what you see and, and, and how, you, how you respond to something. Absolutely. And if I took a group of people to Venice and we all walked down the same street, we might look at some similar things, but we might also really notice different um, aspects of what's happening in the street. So we all have very personal responses, which... Um, change on different days or at different different times um, I don't know whether uh, you get this or anybody else out there gets this but sometimes I get these sort of slightly filmic moments where I'm walking around Edinburgh and the light in Edinburgh is um, very special and I feel like I'm being filmed walking and I notice lots of things now it could be the next day that I could walk down the same street and I'm actually feeling a bit dull and just not taking things on board but in terms of just going back to your question about um about the particular times of day it is about what we notice and about light conditions and about that sensitivity to being being in a place and the tiny nuance of change um, and obviously dusk and dawn are very particular times of day you know quite often we're not up at dawn so if you're up at dawn it's quite a special time and those are the times as well like you know, particularly like for photographers and things as well though those kind of golden light times and yeah you know, interesting times where you know where different things happen and you see the world in a different way than you maybe do on a day-to-day -day basis as well yeah. so yeah, and I guess with them having the sort of Italian and, and Scottish titles to them, there's something about when you're traveling somewhere, you might be up at an earlier time because you're excited or you, you've got to get up early to get somewhere. So that whole thing about being in a different location and just being aware, so it's sort of... Um, it's an extra excitement yeah, being somewhere, isn't it? Like to that. sort of observe these different things, yeah. 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 Um, I've just there's there's a, a wee question come in um, just asking just a, a very practical question um, about how you you were talking about those those pieces being quite having quite a velvety finish yeah. and how yeah. you create that velvety effect on your pieces. Oh, it's poli it's polishing them. So uh, I mean they're cast within a smooth mold, so they come out uh, very smooth. Okay. But then you polish them with. Uh, diamond pads and the higher how, the, how long do you have to polish them for is it a, a, quite an intensive process or is it a quick no, no it can go really quickly um but depending on the grit of your pad you get you know it could be quite a coarse finish yeah. and then the finer and finer you get the smoother and um, more delicate and more velvety it is yeah 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 so, um yeah, I mean, there is, I mean, mosaic is really tactile and those panels, I did work out actually, there were 360 sections, those little sections that I cast, obviously I cast more, but that meant I'd stuck over two and a half thousand gold tessera into the mold. all the calculations to work out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've got, I've got, there's one, there's one other question I want to get in before we, we run out of time. Um, somebody was asking about, you know, the, the last piece you were talking about in terms of the, the buyer potentially becoming the curator um, and potentially sort of rearranging how things and how yeah. you feel about that, letting, letting somebody else take control um, of the outcome of your final piece. They will have a, a say in how it's, you know, eventually arranged. I uh, yes, that's an it's an interesting one, isn't it? A curious one. And certain work, I certainly wouldn't feel comfortable about about that because it would be made in a very particular way. Whereas this work, I'm thinking that there will be something about the arrangement and rearrangement. So which, you've got it in your head already that that is going to happen, so that it's well, less I'm, anxiety. I'm, producing or something that somebody yeah. else um if, if it works i like the idea because they're so tactile and people want to touch them that 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 becomes a participatory part of the work yeah uh, so that feels to me it's quite an important element that i want to build in that people can interact with their own work so and also it could um 
you know, it could be a portrait format or, you know, it could be hung maybe in a, in a horizontal format. So, you know, you'd have the same number of pieces, but what happens? I'm sure there'd be, <laughs> I'm sure I'd dictate to some degree how, yeah. you know, the permutations. Okay, and um, we kind of get into towards the end of the time that we've got, so we're quite tight on time, trying to keep to schedule for the for the next speakers. Um, but you were talking just a little bit about the end, how you've kind of moved over lockdown to some of your drawings, um, and yeah, sort of the artist support pledge you've been using those as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think our people um, people can follow you on social media and see some of those drawings there um, as yes, well, can't they? So I've been uh, embracing artist support pledge, which is a fantastic thing. So on Instagram, so people can follow me under my name, Joan Kessel. Um, and it's it's actually been fantastic, uh, although didn't come about through a good situation of being locked out of the studio, but it has been fantastic. To yes, it's been lovely to see those different drawings um, develop um, and, and the different mediums and stuff. It's been lovely yeah. to, to see. Um, OK, we're, we're, we're just about out of time. But what I want to say um, to everybody is that if you do have questions, um, you know, you can ask those questions via via social media. Um, and hopefully, you know, we can, if you, if you have questions for, for Doogie, we can get those to him and he can and give us a bit of feedback or something that we can, we can share yeah. that as well. Yeah. Um, but again, and thank you. I'll just say as well that I'm, I've just tentatively started running workshops again post lockdown. And yes, and we do, uh, thanks for mentioning that because we do have um, a list um, and people should have a link to that of we've, we've created a list of workshops that our speakers and presenters, you know, are, are running plus other ones from um, BAM members as uh, professional members that run workshops so people can access that for yeah. um, seeing different workshop dates as well. And sometimes uh, those questions really, they kind of need to go into a workshop. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean to sort of develop people's ideas and so on. Yeah. Well, thank you, Joanna, for, for being here to have a question and answer session with and for, for a lovely um, you know, video, really interesting uh, conversation between you and Doogie. Um, so we're going to we're going to finish up the session just now um, and people can go and have just a, a break for, for a few minutes. Um, we're going to start back promptly at 11 o'clock um, for the, the next talk, which will be um, Lillian Sizemore and Helen Bodicum. Um, talking about, um, it's, I think it's making, is it, no, thinking, thinking in mosaic. Um, so, sorry, not 11, midday. I'm, I'm an hour behind. We're starting at midday in about um, just under 10 minutes. Um, okay, thanks very much, Joanna. Okay, thank okay, you. Bye-bye.